Hey gang, Nate Bear here, lead technical tactician for Monument Traders Alliance and Trade of the Day. And in today's video, I want to go over the indexes and I want to show you my favorite chart on the planet right now. All right, so let's dive right in. Now, what I want to do is start like we always do with a look at the indexes. This is the SPY. And what I want to bring to your attention is basically this is August. This was September. Two pretty choppy downward biased months after a string of solid bullish action in the S&P 500. We're now out of those months. We're now into what is historically a calmer, more bullish period for stocks going into October, November, and December, the final quarter of 2023. And what I want to do is look at the structure of both the QQQ and the SPY. So the SPY here is well under the 55 EMA right here it is well under the 21 EMA and it is currently under the 8 EMA. So the Q's, I'm sorry, the SPY has negatively stacked EMAs and price is below all of these EMAs. What that tells me is that right now on the SPY, the path of least resistance is lower. This is bearish for the moment. With that said, we are down into some support. We are at minus 3 ATR on the indexes on the index or near minus three ATR. We actually hit minus three ATR last week and got a little bounce where we failed at the ADMA. So for something to change, for something to shift, in my opinion, here in the SPY, we first have to clear back above the ADMA on a closing basis. And then we have to come up here and we have to challenge these bigger EMAs, the 21 and the 55. If we look at this on a shorter time frame chart, well, before we do that, let's look at the cues. And let's just have a quick comparison. So the Qs here have the same sort of a situation where we have stacked negative EMAs, 55 on top, 21 in the middle, 8 on the bottom. But if I zoom in, you can see that the 8 here is actually starting to curl. It's starting to hook up, right? In addition to that, the SPY, I'm sorry, the yeah, well, the SPY is down here, well below its 8 EMA. The Qs yesterday already closed above their 8 EMA. So the Qs here are leading, tech is leading. My favorite markets to trade are when tech leads, okay? I love it when the big boys lead, when Apple and Amazon and Netflix and Tesla and Microsoft and Meta, Google. I love it when these big companies, the big trillion dollar companies are leading the way higher. Those are the strongest markets for me to trade. So the, the cues here are setting up that way. In addition, we also have a shift in the momentum of the squeeze right here. So we're starting to think possibly something like this, some hooking type action. If we zoom in and look at the 60 minute charts, I want to draw another comparison for you. Let's look at the structure here of the cues. The cues here for me have a pretty bullish type of reversal setting up. We've got this inverse head and shoulders with a pretty clear neckline. And we've got this gap right in through here. I think the cues are headed towards 365, 366 this week. If nothing crazy happens, if nothing knocks them off their perch, I think that the potential for a reversal out of this pattern and a test of those falling 55 and 21 EMAs right in through here around 365 is possible and, and also potentially likely. For the SPY, we don't, we don't have that structure, not even close. So the SPY here is still in this sort of down channel, right? We're still in this little down channel uh, in the SPY. We do not have that bullish structure yet. And the IWM, which I don't covered a ton, I don't trade a ton, but it's actually even worse than the SPY having already taken out the lows set last week right through here. So Qs are leading, the S&Ps are kind of weak, and the IWM looks pretty much terrible. Just to paint that picture. So we do not have yet, the point of this whole discussion is to Im indicate or illustrate that we just don't have a market yet where things are just, everybody's great, we're all holding hands and making money together. We've still got a lot of uh, back and forth. We've got a lot of sort of indecision. We've got a lot of potential for uh, continued volatility, but I am looking for bullish plays in the queues until we get up to the 55, 21 EMA area. And then from there, we'll see if a short starts to make sense, right? If the queues can kind of rally up here, close this gap, and then we'll see, we'll start watching a 30 minute chart and looking for signs of potentially rolling over, which may or may not happen. But if, uh, you know, we've got big earnings coming up at the end of the month, middle of the month to the end of the month with all the big tech names. So I think maybe we get a little bit of a grind, you know, sort of slightly higher maybe. And then from here, we see what's going to happen with these tech earnings. We're going to go up or down into the end of the year. I think that's going to be a big, big factor. 
All right, now let me show you my absolute favorite chart on the planet right now, and that is Meta. So keep in mind that we just discussed the indexes and we talked about how the moving averages were stacked negatively, right? The eight on the bottom, the 21 in the middle, and the 55 on top. Well, here in Meta, we have the exact opposite. We've got the 55 on the bottom. We've got the 21 EMA in the middle, and we've got the eight EMA on the top, and we've got price trading above the eight EMA. So what we have here in Meta is a bullish structure. It's very simple. It's not there's no arguing, there's no debating. It's not like, well, let's zoom out and look at a weekly or let's look at a monthly or no. If the averages are stacked negative on whatever time frame chart you're looking at, be that a five minute or, or a weekly, a monthly, a daily, that chart is currently bearish. If they're stacked positive, whatever time frame you're looking at, that chart is currently bullish. So meta here is bullish, right? So what I'm looking for is a potential run into earnings. I would like to buy Meta off of about 300. You can see I've got some alerts set here around 300 and around 297. So if we get a little weakness, a little pullback into this area, I'm buying Meta calls. And I am looking at going out into the earnings series, which is October 27th. And I'll be looking at buying these $330 calls. They're out of the money. And again, that's okay because we have earnings. So the implied volatility will stay elevated because of the earnings in Meta. All right, so on a dip to 300, I want to buy the $330 calls in Meta for October 27th. I hope it helps, and I hope you have a good one. I'll talk to you soon. Later.